right, Rich Van Tassel back with you, continuing on with the Week 5 game recaps. Next up, we got the Chicago Bears and the Indianapolis Colts. Colts getting a much-needed victory over the Bears. Bears dropping 1-4, and four. Colts improved 2-3. and three. Brian Hoyer, 33 of 43. This is for Chicago, 397 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Jordan Howard coming along pretty well as a running back, 16 carries, 118 yards, 7.4 yards per rush. Cameron Meredith, 1 for 6. Altogether, the team, 19 of 125, 6.6 .6 yards per rush. Cameron Meredith was also the top receiver. 9 receptions, 130 yards, a touchdown. Alshon Jeffrey, 5 for 77. Zach Miller, 7 of 73. Jordan Howard also had a touchdown. Josh Sitton recovered a fumble. Cameron Meredith fumbled twice. Lost one of them, recovered one of them. Eddie Royal uh, had a fumble. Three sacks for Willie Young. He's been impressive thus far this season. Five sacks total for Chicago. Connor Barr, three for four in his field goals. Andrew Luck, 28 of 39. 322 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Frank Gore, 14 of 75. Five for 13 for Andrew Luck. The team, 21 of 98. I believe Frank Gore passed Jim Brown on the all-time rush yards list in this game. Hats off to him. 4.7 yards per rush for the team. T.Y. Hilton, 10 receptions, 171 yards, one touchdown. Dwayne Allen, 6 for 50. He also had a touchdown. Dequell Jackson recovered a fumble. Andrew Luck fumbled and recovered it. Dwayne Allen fumbled. No sacks for Indianapolis. Adam Vinatieri, 5 for 5 in his field goal. So, Indianapolis getting a much-needed victory. They still have to solve that offensive line situation. It's really getting ugly out there. And... I don't know where they're going to turn at this point because the more and more that goes on, the less and less they're going to have a chance uh, this season. So we'll have to see what they can do going forward. But they're in a bad way if they can't figure it out. Chicago, it is what it is. Just not a very good team and losing a tough game today. Next up, the New England Patriots pounding the Cleveland Browns 33-13. to very happy to see Tom Brady back, at least I am, 28 of 40, 406 yards, 3 touchdowns, no interceptions. LeGarrette Blunt, 18 carries, 37 yards, that's 2.7 yards per rush, 1 touchdown. Altogether, the team, 35 of 98, 2.8 yards per rush, and of course, the touchdown. Chris Hogan, 4 for 114, receiving Ron Gronkowski, 5 for 109, Martellus Bennett, 6 for 67. He had 3 touchdowns, we know that New England loves the fullbacks. No fumbles either way. Two sacks for the team. Pat Chung had an interception. Steven Gostowski, one for two in his field goals. For the Cleveland Browns. Cody Kessler got knocked out. He was 5 for 8, 62 yards, one touchdown. Charlie Whitehurst came in 14 of 24, 182 yards. He had one touchdown, one interception. Terrell Pryor even went one for three for five yards. It's really getting <laughs> disastrous in Cleveland this far this season. Isaiah Crowell, 13 carries, 22 yards. The team all together, 22 carries, 27 yards. Not going to get the job done. Gary Barnage, five for 76 receiving. Andrew Hawkins, four for 56. He had the touchdown. Terrell Pryor fumbled and recovered a fumble. Cody Kessler fumbled. It was not lost. Only one sack, no interceptions. Uh, no field goals for Cody Parkey. Uh, New England, now that Tom Brady's back, no rust on him. I didn't expect there would be much. I expected some, though. But, again, they were playing the Cleveland Browns, so maybe there was rust. It just didn't matter because the Cleveland Browns are that bad. As for Cleveland, what do they do from this point forward? I really don't know. Um, you know, it looks like Whitehurst is going to be getting the starts from now on. But... It doesn't really matter at this point. That team is just in such a bad way. There's not much you can say or do that's going to remedy that situation for them because they're, they're, they're the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> I can't say much else other than they're the Cleveland Browns and they're not the Cleveland Cavaliers. All right, next up. Let's see where we're going here. Uh, we'll go to this one. The Cowboys over the Bengals, 28-14 to for the visiting Bengals. Andy Dalton was not even that bad in this game. 29-41, 269 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Giovanni Bernard, 9 carries, 50 yards. That's 5.6 yards per rush. Andy Dalton, 6 for 34, 5.7 yards per rush. Altogether, 19 of 96, 5.1 yards per rush. 
Brandon LaFell, the top receiver, 8 for 68, 2 touchdowns. A.J. Green relatively held in check. We'll get into more Clay, Mo Claiborne in a minute, 4 for 50. Vincent Ray recovered a fumble. That was Dak Prescott's first turnover as a pro. Carlos Dunlap had a sack. It was the only sack of the game. No interceptions. And uh, Mike Nugent was 0 for 1 in his field goals for the Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott, very impressive, 18 of 24. 227 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. Ezekiel Elliott gashed up the what is usually a pretty proficient Cincinnati defensive line. 15 of 134, 8.9 yards per rush, two touchdowns. Alfred Morris, 6 for 33, 5.5 yards per rush. All the good of the team, 29 of 180, 6.2 yards per rush. Dak Prescott had four rush yards on seven carries. He did have a rush touchdown. Obviously, there were some knees involved there. Terrence Williams was pretty nice in this game. 5 for 70 receiving. Cole Beasley, 4 for 53 and a touchdown. Jason Witten, 3 for 43. There was no Des Bryant in this game. Prescott fumbled twice. One was on a bad snap exchange. Recovered one. Lost one. Lucky Whitehead fumbled a punt. Um, Cowboys were getting pressure. Four sacks in this game. Half sack for uh, Jack Crawford, that is. Terrell McLean had one and a half. Brent Maiola had one. Cedric Thornton also had one. Demarcus Lawrence, who came back, did not have a sack, but he was getting pressure in this game. So that is certainly a welcome sign for the Cowboys. Dan Bailey did not kick a field goal either way. Cowboys, very impressive win against what is a quality opponent, though I think Cincinnati is coming down. Cincinnati, you look at the numbers by Dalton. He was forced into a lot of passing situations in this game. Their defensive line just didn't get the job done. And the Cowboys, hey, they're managing the first part of the season. Let's see how long they can keep it up. Obviously, the longer they do so, the more the question marks about who should be the starting quarterback will come in. But at this point, you got to give hats off to the Dallas Cowboys for this victory. So we're going to take a little break right now, put those ones up, come back, do the rest later, and then the Sunday night game, we will recap at some other point. I'll have to see when we'll do that. Unfortunately, these games are just not ending right now, so we're doing them uh, as they end, so we'll upload this, come back, and do the rest. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Thank you.